let's look at the runes. Quick look at runes. These are new runes. So for druids, it's annoying that it doesn't show the slot. Um, oh, it does here. I, okay, cool. That's fine. Uh, Gale wins. Increases damage done by a hurricane by 100% and it no longer has a cooldown. Its mana cost is reduced by 20%. So they're just giving druids some AoE. Can't say it being huge for PvP, but really nice quality of life for PvE for them. Uh, for Moonkins specifically. Then we've got Gore. Striking target with blast rate swipe or more has a 15% chance to reset the cooldown of Mangle Bear and grant 10 rage. Striking a target with Mangle Cat has, or Shred has a 5% chance to reset the cooldown of Tiger's Fury. So this is like PvE tanks. And this is like PvP Feral, I would say. Or, or even PvE Feral. Um, so, a little bit RNG. You're not a huge fan of the RNG aspect of it. You might just get like randomly pumped by Ferals if they get good resets. But just like giving them shitloads of energy, right? So that's a little little scary, I would say. Barks can, can now be like... Tiger's Fury acts as a, a Thistle T, right? Just to confirm. Barks can, can now be cast on allies. No longer penalizes melee combat speed or casting time. And be, can be cast while shapeshifted. So this is like uh, Iron Bark that you can use while in bear. That's cool. I think that's good. I think that's a good change. Uh, Swift Mend now also causes efflorescence healing all party members within 15 yards of the Swift Mend target's location for 109 every one for 15. So their Swift Mend now has like an AOE healing comp component on the location. Yeah, this this can be very scary on ferals i would say if they get good rng if they get a couple of these in a row or like not even in a row but like within you know five globals they're gonna bang the burst is gonna be insane especially when they when they're berserking or whatever um Elune's fires some of your spells and abilities extend the duration of your damage and healing over time effects on their target starfire extends moonfire by six seconds wrath extends sunfire by three seconds that's kind of nice for pve i don't know how much that actually matters for pvp but for pve it's kind of nice Regrowth extends Rejuve by six seconds. Shred extends Rip by two seconds. And that's on the wrists. So that's that's a very like all round rune. Has anyone theory crafted how, how valuable this is actually? I guess I guess for boomies, you, you, I mean, it's all you can really take. For healer, healer druids, maybe this is better. Maybe, may, I mean, maybe this is better for PvP, but I mean, I don't know how much value you can actually get from this. Each effect can only be extended up to three times. I think, I think, um, for PvP, you're just going to use this as a healer. I think PvE as well. This is like more of the Moonkin one. Maybe use this as like Feral. This might be nice for Feral in, uh, well, in PvE. Not sure about PvP. What other options are there? Your Frenzied Regen can now be used in all forms or while not shapeshifted and converts your active resource into health every second for 10 seconds. Up to 10 Rage, 10 Energy or 5% base mana is converted per second into 10% health. I mean, it's nice, I guess, to do in cat. I wonder if they're going to still keep regenerating energy while it's going. I feel like this is really nice to use in cat. I think this is actually quite nice for PvP in general. If you can manage to get into bear or cat and then get the, you know, I, I think ideally getting this the cat one off. I don't know how nice it is to, to use it in caster form. 5% base mana. Got to remember, base mana is not total mana, right? Base mana is your mana pool before you add all the intellect from and, and mana from gear so it's not as not as much as it actually looks like but obviously if you're playing feral or something and send this and then go oom it's a bit awkward so cat like reflexes this is hunters now increase your dodge by 20 percent and your pet's chance to dodge by nine percent in addition wait i swear hunters already had insane dodge reduces the cooldown of your kill command and flanking strike abilities by 50 percent is that good any hunters in the chat can tell me if that's good I feel like that's insane. Like if you use this with Aspect of the Monkey and like survival talents, you just have like insane dodge chance or parry chance as well. You can get a lot of dodge, yeah. So like they really want Melee Hunter to exist. I don't know how, I feel like they just have passive evasion. Like it's actually insane. When you can deterrence with this, you should be 100%, that's crazy. I kind, I kind of like that deterrence actually does something in that case, but I don't think that it's, I don't think this is good for PVP. What I think is, Deterrence should be the way that retail deterrence is where it can avoid spells as well I think hunters are very susceptible to casters and this would help them out in that regard And then you don't have this passive RNG bullshit just normally So I that's that's kind of the way I would go with their survivability because it's like having RNG survivability just doesn't feel good in general It's much nicer to actually have something that you can press and control But yeah, that's just my opinion each time one of your traps is triggered your next shot ability within 20 seconds costs no mana and Incurs no cooldown. Wow, that's kind of nice. 
so they can do like go like chimera trap chimera stuff like that maybe even to another trap into another chimera right marksman's potentially gonna have loads of burst with this rapid killing reduces cooldown of rapid fire by two minutes and your next shot ability within 20 seconds after killing a target worth experience or honor deals 20 percent increased damage kind of nice for like bgs and and blood moon i feel like not that valuable f this uh, this part of it not that valuable for dueling but nice for uh, the group content uh, what's the cooldown on rapid fire normally? Is it five minutes? There's no way it's three minutes, right? I swear it's five minutes. And I think there's some cooldowns in MM to reduce it as well, right? Yeah, some, sorry, some talents. Am I crazy? Does it even exist? Not in vanilla. Wait, is it, uh, is it a TBC Wrath thing? Right, okay. All right, focus fire. Consumes all applications of frenzy from your pet, increasing your range attack speed by 3% and granting four focus to your pet for each application of frenzy consumed. Last 20 seconds, your pet gains frenzy each time it uses a basic attack, increasing its melee attack speed by 6% for 10 seconds, stacking up to five times. So they can have 30% attack speed or they can send the focus fire and get 15% ranged attack speed and what, like 20 focus? Is that even good for the pet? Is this even good? I guess the attack speed is nice, but I feel like just the pet just attacking passively is kind of better for like BM. Thoughts about Sound of the News in this song when they march on the field. I don't know anything about that. You know if you're paying, you get some piss attack speed. I feel like the attack speed doesn't even matter that much for BM, right? That's the thing. So it's like, you're, it's kind of useless. You're just nerfing your pet for a little bit of focus, but it's like, okay, and what? The attack speed is nicer. Like maybe it's good to just take this and not use it, right? Just so that the pet gets this. Raptor Strike increases damage done by Raptor Strike and Mongoose Bite by 15% for 15 sex attacks up to five times. So, oh God. So like every Raptor Strike is going to hurt more. Man, they're really embracing the Melee Hunter Raptor Strike only gameplay, huh? I wonder if this is like a buff or a debuff. I feel like it's going to be a buff. Like what if you can stack Raptor Strike on just random shit and then go and fight someone? TNT increases the damage done by explosive shot and all your damaging traps by 10%. It's kind of boring, isn't it? It's not a lot. I feel like this is more PvE AOE rune all right advanced warding mage increase the magnitude of your mana shield frost ward and fire ward by 100 percent and decreases mana drained by mana shield by 50 percent per damage done that's kind of nice it doesn't do that much against priest because mana shield is is fizz right frost ward is frost fire ward is fire and you can dispel them anyway so against priest it's not that big of a deal but, but against something like rogue it's kind of nice but i guess they have to lose deep freeze for it so turns target for five sec only usable on frozen targets Deals 803 to 935 damage to targets permanently immune to stun. So you need to be very, very hot. I'm, gonna be, I'm assuming this is going to be on global, right? You're going to need to be very, very hot on dispelling the Novas and keeping yourself clean against Frost Mage. Temporal Anomaly launches an orb of temporal energy which slowly moves forward and every two seconds grants all nearby party members a shield absorbing. So this looks like the heal boy one. It's like, um, what was that pre-spell? Divine, a, a divine fucking star. Except instead of... Uh, Instead of a heal, it's doing a shield. So this is, this is okay. Not that interesting. I think deep freeze is the, the big one here for PvP. Whereas, I mean, this is kind of nice as well, but I think this, I'm trying to think of where you would use this over deep freeze, honestly. This is a straight copy of the Evoker retail spell. I think they're getting a lot of the arcane mage healer uh, inspiration from uh, either uh, the, the Evoker healer. I think it's CS into deep freeze is scary. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be a disperse for sure, right? And deep freeze probably only like, what, 30 seconds CD. So scary stuff. You'd have to like trinket one or disperse one, then trinket one. Maybe disperse. Probably can't disperse the next, but yeah. Can also deep freeze off finger procs. Yeah, I mean, you'll definitely see more mages playing fingers. I'm not actually sure what mages have to lose to play fingers. Let me see. Let's take a look. What do mages lose for fingers? They lose. Oh, burnout. They either lose burnout or enlightenment. Yeah. So burnout is the crit and then enlightenment is more damage when you have high mana. And then obviously regeneration. So yeah, we'll, we'll definitely see more fingers of frost usage. But yeah, nice to see the the baseline fifteen percent crit is something that they have to you know to lose to take it. That's gonna help. Uh, Bale fireball, just like another frost fireball basically. Um, damage of your next Bale fireball within thirty seconds will be increased by ten percent, and your spirit will be decreased by ten percent for thirty seconds. Stacks up to ten times. If your spirit reaches zero as consequence, you die. I mean, this is just a weird one, right? Like. I don't really understand this. Just only use it nine times. Like what? Weird. Uh, displacement teleports back to where you last cast blink from and resets the cooldown on blink. Only usable within 10 seconds of casting blink. Dude, this is what I was, or kind of what I was um, envisioning for spectral guys for priest, right? But instead of, you know, blinking when you use spectral guys, 
it just puts down an image that you can run away from, kind of like Zedalt. So you would Spectral Guys, it creates a copy of yourself, you can run away from it. And then if you re reactivate Spectral Guys, it ports you back to the, the, the Spectral image and swaps you with it. So then any incoming projectiles hit the image and not you, and you can dodge projectiles with it and, and kite melee and things like that. So that's what I was envisioning for Spectral Guys for SOD, but obviously it never happened. But this is kind of like that where it ports you back to the uh, to the blink location. Almost like almost built in. So yeah, this is this is pretty big, I'd say. Molten armor causes 17 fire damage when hit, increases spell crit by 5%, reduces the chance you are crit by 5%. So it's another 5% crit for mages. I wonder how much crit you can actually get as mage now. Like if you run like this, you run burnout. There's definitely a bunch of other shit as well. You have shatter. You could run some weird elemental build, I feel like, with shatter and just absolutely pump. Won't even need chat later on, just default 100% crit chance, right? All right, Paladins, Fanaticism. Increases your crit chance of Holy Spells by 18%. That's such a random fucking number, by the way. That's so much stats, by the way. That is... Just imagine how hard it is to get 1% crit on gear, right? This rune is giving 18%. You can have 1% crit on every single gear slot and not get that much. That is so much crit. Like, it's so fucking much. Especially for a class... That has a load of bonuses for critting, right? This is why I find it really weird. And I'll, I'll go down quickly just to, as an aside. This is why I find it really weird that they add in this, right? Divine Aegis, critical heals. Surge of Light, critical spell casts. Like, you're not critting. You're barely critting. Why are there crit re reliant runes as priest when you don't have anything to increase your crit at all? Nothing. So why build runes that are centered around the crits? Why not just reduce the chance? And make it around hits so that you can actually control it somewhat more or at least i don't know it's like everyone is getting crit shit and not except priest but then like half our shit is relying on crits and even even fucking despair periodic damage from your spells can now be critical strikes okay it's kind of nice and it will help with our scaling later on but there's nothing that gives us actual crit as a priest so you just like have to pray that you get it on gear but i mean again you put one percent crit on every item you're still not getting this much right they're getting this from one rune it's insane actually insane it's just like the, the the priest runes for me are just really badly designed this phase overall anyway carrying on improved sanctuary increases damage done by blessing of sanctuary by 100 percent and increases damage done by blessing of sanctuary by 30 percent of shield profile value. okay so it's prop bullshit don't care uh lights grace your holy holy light spell reduces the cast time of your next holy light by 0 0.5 sec last 15 sec is this just one time i guess you should probably try and get on. i'm on already on us yeah I'll, I'll i'll hit him up and see what he's using dmb junkie thank you it's spammable. Yeah, but it doesn't stack, right? Like, you do one cast of Holy Light, and then every Holy Light is half second off, right? Yeah, okay, I got it. Uh, Wrath, your Consecration damage can now be crits. Damage from your Exorcism, Holy Shock, Holy Wrath, and Consecration spells gains additional crit chance equal to your melee crit chance. See, like, more gifted crit. It's so weird, man. It's like, this is the dot equivalent that we get, but then they get all this extra shit as well. It's, it's weird, man. Like, maybe they're trying to tone down priests a bit, right? So, yeah, um, more crit. For this looks like kind of shocker, didn't he? Has four head runes, weirdly. I wonder if this, like these are both data mine, but I wonder if this is like replacing this. Because this later on is just going to be better than this, surely. New part is Curse of Tongues, Elements, and Curse of Shadow. Do they do they stack? Does it Can it do all of them at once? Like homies, or is it like, is it random? It might have a pet bar. Dude, imagine being able to put tongues on people as priests. Yeah, if, it, I, I, if it's a pet, it can't be usable with Fiend as well, right? Uh, Hammer of Righteous Hammer, the current target, and up to two nearby targets, causing four times your main hand damage per second is holy damage. This is like, well, I don't understand this. Isn't that just absurd damage? Four times your main hand damage per second. Oh, damage per second. So it's just a fucking dot. An AoE dot. That seems kind of PvE-ish. Impam of Wrath is now instant and no cooldown. And it's reset every time it damages an enemy below 10% health. So don't get under 10% health against the pala now. Fucking hell. Purifying power reduces cooldown of exorcism and holy wrath by 50%. And holy wrath can now be cast at any target and will stun undead and demon targets with two sec. I feel like this is better. Yeah, it's the DPS things. Divine Aegis. All right, we're onto priest. Uh, crit heals. Create a protective shield on the target, absorbing 30% of the amount healed. Call an eye of the void to fight for you for 30 seconds. Apparently it does tongues, elements, and shadow. Can we even benefit from elements at all as a priest? What does elements give? Yeah, another pet. Okay, so this, I mean, I, I'm not a big fan. I'll go through all the runes and I'll give my opinion on each one, but yeah. Mind Blast refreshes the duration of your Shadowed Pain on the target back to its max duration. Periodic damage can now be crits. 
Crit cuts cause your next smite and flash shield to be 15 within 15 seconds to be instant and void zone. In terms of void zone in the target area, the deals damage. So first of all, this is just PVE. You're not going to be using this for PVP. I can't, I can't imagine people are just going to run out of it. It's just, yeah. You could maybe use it and stand in it, but I don't know how big it is. That's pretty much the only application I can see of it. If it was like crazy damage and you can just use it on yourself to get melee to fuck off. This is mostly going to be PVE, I think. For disc, you basically have two options, right? You have Surge of Light. Almost certainly, unless you're playing some aggro version of disc, you're not going to use Despair. But for like healing, you're going to be using this. This is for PVP, right? For PVE, you'll definitely use this. It's not going to feel good because you don't crit very often. Um, maybe like Pom can bounce around and like subsequent procs can, can crit and give you a a proc of this but the thing is even if you get a proc of surge of light a lot of the time it's not even going to feel good because flash heal is really expensive you don't really want to cast flash heal this is the thing this needs to make flash heal instant and free so it needs to be and free because a lot of the time you're going to get this proc and you don't care about casting a smite you want to heal and you don't want to use flash heal because you're going to go oom by using it it's like it's it's not nice it's not nice at all so this doesn't feel good and that goes for for pve and pvp a lot of the way that you heal at the moment is like Palm, Penance, Rang 1, Renew, the occasional shield if it's emergency or flash shield if it's emergency. That's kind of like the way you heal right now. Your, hit, your crit anyway is kind of low, so it's not going to proc very much. So it'd be much nicer to see this as like a chance on hit instead of on crits, especially with classes having um, stuff that reduces your chance to be crit as well. So this is not good. This, is, this, is, this needs a complete rework. Uh, Despair. It, again, it's nice that your dots can now crit and our crit scaling and our general scaling later on in the game is going to be better. But this is something that I would personally put in at 60, not at 50, because there's not enough crit on gear yet. And I will do the same thing for the Warlock one. We don't have any talents that give us crit, so starting to give us crit talents now makes very little sense. Uh, sorry, crit runes now makes very little sense unless they gave us other runes to bolster our crit. Or put a secondary component on this, like Wrath, where... You gain extra crit. But yeah, this is going to make... This is going to be more valuable on Priest than Warlock, I would say. Because our dots hit harder. So the crits are going to do more. Yeah, it's more damage gained. Um, but yeah, as I said, it's not going to happen that often. Because our crit is so low. So it's kind of weird that they put it in now and not 60. It's almost like they put it in because they didn't have any better ideas. So, so far, everything pretty uninspired. That's wrists. Head. This was actually Mind Flay for a while. This is very... Putting Mind Flay on this shows such a disconnect between the person that's designing the rune and how the class is actually played right now. In PvE, you don't even use Mind Flay. You don't even talent Mind Flay. And in PvP, the only time you're using Mind Flay is to either slow somebody or to finish off while you're potentially getting pushback. You don't care about the Shadow of Pain duration on the target in that scenario. So this just makes no sense at all. So you're never going to use this in PvP and you don't Mind Flay in PvE. So they changed it to Mind Blast. Now it makes it a little bit more useful in PV PvE because it means you only have to pain once per fight. Okay, great, nice. But in PvP, it's kind of like whatever. You don't, again, you don't, a lot of the time you don't even take improved Shadow of Pain because you don't care about the duration. It's already, they're already dead by the end of the duration anyway. So you don't care about extending it. So this is useless in PvP pretty much. So then you've got Eye of the Void, which apparently is Tongues, Shadow, and elements you don't care about elements because it does nothing for you so it's all about tongues and shadow don't know if it's going to be random or if you can actually um if you can actually choose but yeah bit of a weird one and then divine aegis again for disc you don't crit that much so this is a, a passive that's not going to feel great so yeah not impressed by the runes this fades at all feel like there was a lot of uh better options but yeah Elements boss mind spike. Okay, fair enough. My you're not going to cast many mind mind spikes. Mind spikes though. So yeah, that's my thought on priest runes. I'm, I don't know if if you guys feel the same, but yeah, that's uh, that's kind of where I'm at on the on these things at the moment. I think as shadow for PvP, you're probably just going to run Eye of the Void and Despair. I think for disc, you're most likely just going to run as he just healing. You're just going to run Divine Aegis and Surge of Light. There's, you just don't have any other options for PvE shadow. You're probably and that's for PvE and PvP. For PvE shadow. To be fair, you might run Eye of the Void as disc as well. For PvE Shadow, then you're just going to run Pain and Suffering and Despair and maybe Void Zone for Trash. So yeah, it's a little bit awkward. So if you don't run Pain and Suffering, do you take the AoE? Um, you, so for PvP, you would take Eye of the Void, right? It's these three that you have to choose between. This is the head ones. So you'll just run Eye of the Void. You have another pet. Again, doesn't feel great. I'm going to do Gnome Gun probably 45, 60 minutes after patch drop. I have quests turn in first. Do you have a group? So, yeah, for PvE Shadow, as I said, you probably run Void Zone for Trash, Despair on Boss. 
um, and then either Eye of the Void or Pain and Suffering, depending on if you have a Warlock, probably. Uh, so Rogue Combat Potency, you have a 20% chance to gain 15 energy each time you deal melee damage with your offhand weapon. Uh, so just passive more energy, I guess. You gain 2 energy every time you deal a melee or ranged crit strike. Like, uh, so why... I don't understand this. Why would you add both of these to head, right? It's literally just going to be... There's going to be a threshold for the amount of crit. And once you have that much crit, one is just better than the other, right? That's the way I see it, right? And you just, they're like almost directly compared. And one is always just going to be better than the other. And you're just never going to take the other one. It's very weird. Uh, when any player in your party critically hits with a spell or ability, you gain a combo point on your current target. This effect cannot... Uh, okay, so standard hat, passive... Uh, uncontrolled stuff. It's kind of boring. Carnage. Your abilities deal 20% increased damage to targets afflicted by one of your bleed effects. Um, so this is going to be mostly Asa, right? Would you just put a rupture up? I mean, I, there's no way you're going to ever out damage the, like having like an ambush, right? Or have a, you know, out value having a cheap shot. Like how are you going to get the bleed up? Does it work on like a random item that has a bleed effect? Garrett mutilate. Yeah, but Garrett doesn't silence right now, right? So you're just going to get CC'd instantly. At least against Priest. Cut to the chase, your Abyss and Venom abilities. Refresh, Slice and Dice, or Blade Dance. Puts five combo max. Both are active, only these, okay. Unfair advantage, whenever you dodge an attack, you gain unfair advantage. Striking back for 100% of your main attack. It's gonna have fair more than once per second. I mean, it's all passive shit, man. The rogue, the rogue rings are even worse than the priest ones. I'm not a big fan of that at all. Shaman burn, your Flame Shock now strikes up to three targets. Jeez. Dude, Shaman got good shit, man. I feel like this is spicy for non ellie shamans actually but there's probably better shit for non ellie shamans let's see damaging with melee increases attack power by 100 of your intellect yeah i mean you just take this 100 your spell damage and healing by 30 percent of your total 100 if you're enhanced you're taking this i don't know who takes this because ellie doesn't need multiple flame shock targets actually right ellie needs flame shock range ellie is desperate for flame shock range right as soon as ellie gets flame shock range they are destroying everything so the, the value of this, yeah, is going to come from the instant proc. So yeah, in, in STV, this is kind of nice, right? This is the same as the priest AoE dot. But the problem is the range is so short that if there's a lot of targets that they can proc this on, like sometimes you even struggle with the shared pain from priest, right? Sometimes you're already going too close with shared pain. Whereas with this, I mean, you're definitely going, you're going close. In STV, they will get shock range on an item. Do they, is that confirmed? If they get increased range on flame shock, Ellie is going to be insane, man. Uh, tidal Waves, when you cast Chain, Heal, or Riptide, you gain two charges of Tidal Waves. No, man. Just to cast some of your Healing Wave by 30% increased crit charge. Dude, we're getting Kata Resto Shamans. You know how fucking diarrhea that, that spec is. Kata Resto Shaman was literal fucking diarrhea, man. Like, spam random fucking debuffs, can't purge anything off them, press fucking Riptide, Earth Shield, occasional Healing Stream Totem, go AFK, press some Shocks and Grinding. It's like the worst fucking spec ever. Yeah, the instant lava bursts are going to be scary, but obviously if they, they are moving into 20-yard range of three targets, it's also scary for them, so there's risk versus reward to it. This is fucking AIDS. Just because it makes loads of fucking debuffs on the target, and it's so annoying. Your lightning shield, ne your lightning shield never loses charges. Now has a one-second cooldown and deals damage to all enemies within eight yards. What the fuck? So they just have, like, a fucking AoE thorns. Riptide. I mean, we know what Riptide does. Omega, instant healing. What's the cooldown on it? Do we know? Six seconds. Oh my god, that's gonna be ultimate pain. I think Resto Shaman might be the best healer just because of this. I actually think Resto Shaman is gonna be the, the best best PvP healer next patch with this and this. And it's gonna be the best, but it's not gonna be fun to play against like Discord. It's gonna be absolute aids to play against for fucking everyone. It's gonna be horrible, man. Oh just looking at it, I'm already cringing. Just all instant healing, nothing stoppable. Loads of stuff to be a pain in the ass. Tanky as fuck. A million purges required to remove anything. They can purge you. Ground, Tremor, Earth Shock. Shit class, man. Lightning Bolt and Chain Lightning have a 30% chance to add an additional charge to your active Lightning Shield up to a maximum of 9 charges. Earth Shock now releases all Lightning Shield charges above 3, dealing their damage to the target and energy. Dude, Ellie, dude, Shamans look so fucking good. Like, all Shaman specs look fucking unreal, man. Like, actually so unreal. So Shamans are going to be the, the healer gods. Ellie Shamans are going to be caster gods. Other than maybe Warlocks. Actually, Ellie didn't get that much, to be fair. But this is still going to be really annoying. Not this, this one. Your Lightning Shield on 9 charges. Your melee attacks have a 6% chance to trigger one of those charges, immediately damaging your target. I mean, this is going to be the enhanced single target, right? 
To be honest, what like what if Enhance just takes Riptide? Enhance is gonna run Riptide. What am I even talking about? Enhance is never gonna die. Like you just run Riptide as Enhance, and then what? It's mana expensive. How much does it cost? It doesn't say on here. Right, Warlocks, and then Warriors. Half an hour. Fuck, man, it's taking ages to go through the runes. I'll do a best list probably tomorrow when I get some time. 18% base. How much is like Penance, for example? Is it like 9%? 18% base isn't that much. I swear. If you haven't seen the Enhanced Nash from yesterday, they enough to the ground. What do they do? Backdraft. Your Conflag ability also grants 30% Spell Haste. Dude, no one has Spell Haste. Warlock's just getting Spell Haste out of nowhere. To be fair, Destro needed some Haste. They had a hard time getting casts off. Pandemic period damage from your Corruption. UA, Agony, Immolate, Doom, Siphon, Life can all be crits. Okay, same as the Priest one. Uh, when activated, this temporal ability temporarily gives 30% increase to your max health for 20 seconds. After this expires, the health is lost. Additionally, while in meta, Vengeance causes your wings to slow your falling speed. Okay, so it's just um, a BM trinket for... Well, just, yeah, just a BM trinket. I can't see him ever using it over this, so at least Affliction. And this is nice for Destro, right? But maybe maybe SLSL, uh, SL locks use this, sorry. What's the turntable hi-fi setup? It's, um, it's the missus's. It's not mine. I don't even know what the um, what the record player is. I got it for a couple of birthdays ago. I just know the speakers are edify. You can't SL and meta. What? Have they said that you can't or what? No more SL meta. That's good. I mean, they would be so unreal tanky. Not even funny. I think SL is still going to be scary. With the Insta Corruption, Coil, and UA. I think that's still going to be the play. Yeah, it definitely hurt, Stars, that one. It hurt getting the uh, the dual spec. It's like half my gold, bro. <laughs> I was saving up. Immolation or it burns enemies for 32 damage. So similar to the Shaman AoE. Reduces all magic damage taken by 10% last until cancelled. I wonder how much damage this is compared to the Shaman one. Summon Felguard. Uh, benefits from all effects. So you could also run this if you were playing SL. And your fell god is going to resist everything. Why is we stuck on? Um, I mean, you need to just close agent.exe and then reload battle net. Uh, UA after this spell calls 870 damage to the spell under science him for five seconds. I feel like that's I feel like that's going to be scary as fuck, man. UA damage at 50 is only 350 over 15 seconds. Void plague is 1k. I mean, the UA value the UA value comes from protecting the drain life dot, right? That's where the UA value comes from. It's the drain life dot that is the problem. And then the last, oh yeah, that was UA. And the last guy is our warriors. So gladiator stance and aggressive stance that increases damage while you're wearing a shield by 10%, increases block chance by 10%, but it reduces armor by 30 and threat by 10. When are you, do, will warriors actually use this or is it just complete trash? While wearing a shield in gladiator stance, you may use all abilities that are restricted to other stances. I swear this is like just trash. It's on boots rune, so probably some weird dual spec versus melee, but looks trash. It just, yeah, it looks trash, man. <laughs> I don't know, it looks trash, bro. Increase all fizz damage you deal by 10% when you have a shield equipped and reduces the duration of all the sum effects used against you by 50%. This is not stable. Um, taste for blood, puke. Whenever your run ability causes damage over, but yeah, I mean, they're just using to use that, right? Surely. There's no way warriors aren't using this. Vigilance. Focus your protective gaze on a party or raid member, reducing their damage taken by 3%. Kiki, don't ruin my chair, please. I'm transferring 10% of the threat to you in addition. So wait, anyone that's like getting aggro all the time, you can just put this shit on. This is like a tank thing. And if they get aggro, then you can fucking save their ass. Stance is on boots. Oh shit, it's on boots. I don't even see it, okay. Competes with enraged, regen, intervene, rally. So what would you use? Intervene, I suppose. Probably not in a duel. What do you use in a duel? Enraged, regen? The thing is, right, you have to use a one-hander with it, right? So would it ever be better than just playing straight up two-hander arms? I feel like there's just no value in it. It just loses straight up to just playing it straight up. I don't even know how to fucking describe it. I don't know. Warrior goes on a rampage, increasing tap by 2%, causing most sexual damage to 2%. This effect will stack up to five times last 30 seconds and only be used after scoring a crit. So this looks very furious to one-handers, right? Sword and board when you're devastating revenge. Abilities deal damage, they have a 30% chance to reduce cooldown. Shield slam, so prop, probably PvE. I wonder if there's going to be any like weird prop specs for PvP. I reckon there might be some dodgy prop spec potential with the glad stance and something like sword and board. Your melee crit hits enrage you, increasing the crit damage of all your attacks by 10% for 6 seconds. To be honest, the wrist runes look kind of sucky. Would you go rampage as, as uh, arms? Anyone know? These both look kind of monkish, but this is scary for sure. This is a big deal. I actually think like some weird one hand 
Spec might be good. Yeah, it's mad they didn't put Spell Reflect in. That's mad, bro. That's crazy. So that's all the runes. With Taste for Blood, you will have high uptime. Yeah, you probably run this with Taste for Blood for PvP arms. But it's like, it's not that... It's not like it's a flat 10% increase in damage. It's increasing the crit damage of all your attacks by 10%. Like, that's not much. Yeah, it's it's pretty fucking whatever. 10% crit damage. It's pretty low. So yeah, that's all the runes. We've also got...